G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I have some art journaling for you. I actually picked up this copy of Re-Edition, which is a magazine I'd never really heard of before. I got it yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, it's Autumn Winter 2023. It is, it's a fashion, art photography fashion magazine, mostly fashion. Um, and it's just tons of editorials, which I love to use to inspire uh, illustrations or just, you know, playtime. Great for collage as well. Lots of uh, magazines that have lots of heavy ed editorials in them. Uh, but yeah, I just, I mean, I love it. Steve wanted to go to Barnes and Noble and I wasn't going to go originally because I'm still working on my five year Hobonichi video. The filming for that took so long. I, it's gone now, but you can kind of see this uh, little, what's that called? The scab. <laughs> It took me, I'm not even kidding you, I think like seven hours, eight hours to film everything. And I did split it up a little bit, but originally I had filmed it with my DSLR camera where it was just a flip, but it's 365 pages. Uh, you know, I have to like readjust the, the what's it called the focus every now and again, make sure that the colors aren't going crazy due to the temperature changes. Cause it was, if you film it like in daylight, sometimes it picks up that it's daylight and it'll auto adjust the white balance. And then sometimes a cloud will come over and then it'll think, oh, it's cloudy. We should make it more orange so that it looks like it's still sunny. It gets really crazy with the auto white balance. But if I don't do the auto, then I'm just kind of stuck with whatever's there anyway. Um, it's fine. I can try and fix a lot of it in post, like in the editing portion of it, which takes extra time just because you have to go through everything individually but um when I'd finished the whole flip it took ages I think it took like 30 or 40 minutes to flip the whole thing because I was flipping it making sure that you could see it and then moving to the next page but that's for 365 pages plus the extras like the, the start of the book the little year in reviews at the end so let's for all intents and purposes say about 400 pages and you're waiting a few seconds on each page just took forever and then I had to film like the b-roll footage you know like the cover and you know what it looks like from the spine and what it looks like to flip the pages <laughs> just all the things you want to see when you're looking at you know the penultimate video we've worked so hard for five years to get the journal done and complete and actually you know complete that task that i don't want to skimp out on the video the final video that people will see of it um because the what a waste of five years of effort, right? Um, and for all the other years, I've done pretty nice videos of that, like a nice little recap each year. The thing was, when I looked at every right-hand side page, there was so much going on because it's all finished. Whereas years prior, there was only like two or three things maybe to focus on on a page. So when I did these really, you know, aesthetically filmed, really beautiful, you know, b-roll shots i could just kind of focus on that thing and then move to the next page but this time oh steve's messaging me again um this time i had to focus on everything on the page and there were tiny little details that i felt like if i didn't get closer you would you would miss so then not only do you have to like look at the page the spread as it is so you can see it oh steve please please no now you he literally asked if i was filming and i was like yes i'm filming I'm gonna say I'm filming, hang on. <laughs> Lucky I can do it on my computer. So, anyway, uh, you, you need to see the spread so you can see what it all looks like. And then I zoom in on a few different features of the page or the spread that I like so that I can show you those. Uh, but that is, you know, four or five seconds of shooting. I actually sometimes up to eight seconds. When it edits down, it's usually three or four seconds because I think more than that is way too much to look at. Um, but, you know, here and there, give or take, some details you need to look at for a little bit longer. Like if it's words, you tend to have to give a bit more time so that people can read it. So then I was doing about five, you know, I would say two to five extra shots on each of the 365 pages, which at this point, what's like, like 25,000 clips? <laughs> I'm off, I'm off on the math, I'm sure, but it's very much, it's very much footage. It's very much editing. And it has taken me a humongous amount of time to do it. And even in the, the filming, this whole thing to say this, like why I brought that up was because I had my elbow on the desk and I was just use I used the whole, my hands to do like everything except for the stationary uh, eagle eye flip. So for the hours that I was filming all the B-roll footage, I was just kind of moving my elbows back and forth on the desk. And I had literally rubbed the skin raw on my elbow for shooting for so long and just you know, going back and forwards on the desk. It was a lot. 
it will be totally worth it, but I have to say I'm only up to June. I might be almost at July as far as the editing goes, but that's just editing the clips. That's not even doing all the color grading. Um, I've been doing the music with it, so that'll help, but excuse me. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer and uh, it will be all worth it when it's done. But that's what I was going to do yesterday. And then Steve said, let's go to Barnes and Noble. I'd kind of given him my day the day before as well. It was my two days off this week. And I think I gave both of them to Steve. I was kind of journaling about it and being like, it's one of those like husbandly duty things that I just, sometimes I think, you know, the very selfish independent part of me wishes I didn't have to do, <laughs> but it's fine. Like you do it and you know, you'd be a good sport about it. But I, I think I get really angry and I spend a lot of energy trying to tell myself, like, it's fine. Like, you, you should you spend time with him. He's off today. You can be off today. I mean, you probably shouldn't be, but you can be. It won't be the end of the world. But I just think about all the time I'm missing out on and, and working. And I know that sounds terrible, but anyway, that was just the reality of it. So when I went, I thought, well, I'm going to treat myself to a nice little uh, fashion magazine so I can use that in my art journaling. And so it wasn't a complete non-work experience. I did pick up something that I could use today in my video. So I've just picked out a whole bunch of pages that I wanted to be inspired by or that kind of caught my eye as something I could be inspired by. I was drawing either directly referencing the image. I think it was a lot of posing and a lot of really interesting angles I wanted to capture. I'm just really in that right now. I've been drawing photos that Steve took last week of some of our friends and I just really loved those. You might have seen it on Instagram. I did a an Alice in Wonderland inspired by the image that I drew of Grace, who is uh, performs with me over at Knott's Berry Farm. And yeah, last week, I think it was last week, we went and did like a whole photo shoot. No, it might be the week before. I think it was the week before. Uh, we did a whole photo shoot with a couple of the girls that I work with. And yeah, it was really great. It's really fun. Lots of fun imagery to, for me to just used to journal with and to be inspired by. I always like it if I can be inspired by some of Steve's work. Not that I'm not. I mean, I could probably draw anything that he does because I'm a part of the process and I really like it. Um, but yeah, for some reason, I don't usually go back to it. Uh, but here and there, I do get inspired to stop everything I'm doing and just draw it. And I really just liked the awkward like angles and the skew of that photo that I tried to draw. And I found it really difficult. The, the shoes being kind of inwards and then the big chunky heel of it all, like I just don't draw on that particular angle. And it always makes me feel like I have no idea what I'm doing when I start referencing very skewed fashion proportions. But it's a little bit of a challenge and I like to challenge myself from time to time. I go through it like, I always say you should just do whatever makes you enjoy yourself. Sometimes I do enjoy being very calculated and very mathematical, like getting a ruler out, getting a protractor out. Sometimes I do enjoy the challenge of doing something and directly referencing it and doing a good job of kind of matching it. Um, and then other times I have more fun not worrying about any of it. But I always say I just go through seasons. Like I, I can't ever tell how long they're going to last for. But that's why I'm always trying to be in tune with, well, this is what I want to be doing right now. And I don't stop myself from doing it. Even if I'm like right in the middle of doing something else. And if I feel like I want to do something else, I just lean right in, chase down that creative frenzy. And I'm usually always having a good time doing that. I did it the other day with, um, with this, like I'm back into gouache just for a season. I don't know why <laughs> I just had all my gouache out. And then there was a bunch of colors I wanted to play with. So I stacked this little ceramic flower palette full of the, poster color gouache that I have. That one just fell out. Put that back in. <laughs> it's great. Ceramic. So it'll, it doesn't, you know, stick to it, but you just reactivate them and you just use them. I don't know why I've been enjoying gouache. I've put it down to the fact that it's like having a painterly acrylic experience without all the fuss of getting out a whole bunch of paints, but I'm actually kind of into the fuss right now. And I'm not even been cleaning my desk, which is something I usually feel like I have to do before I start a video or anything. I'm also feeling very like, I don't know, like very messy artist, very throw it all in there. Who really cares? So even with the, the skew and the proportion of those images, I wasn't even trying to get like direct references. I was just going with the vibe of it. Like it just felt like it should be more chaotic and more skewed and more whatever. So I was just drawing that. Um, but yeah, I'm having a great time doing that. So I wanted to share some of that process with you. Also in this video, I decided to just put a bunch of my uh, kind of junk 
that I've been collecting in my box. There's a whole bunch of junk that needs to go in my jumbo junk journal, but then I wanted to put some of it in here as well. So I just got some of that stuff out and put it in. The jumbo journal that I started and I made with you on um, screen, has really not got much else in it. I've kind of been waiting to collect a whole bunch of junk and just to do it at once, but I've been collecting bags. I'm pointing over there like you can see. <laughs> I've been collecting like paper bags and uh, like poster things, like big papery items like that are just around the house or that I Steve brings home and he's like, do you want this? And I've been collecting all of them. Uh, I would actually like to make a new jumbo journal out of all of those. So it's not Trader Joe's paper bags. It's like, there's a Madewell bag. Like a, it was, they, they gave it to us at the store. You put your clothes in there. Like a, a shopping tote, but it's paper. What are they called? <laughs> shopping bags, I don't know. Um, I wanted to use some of those and like a poster that I have from the Mean Girls movie we went to see. I want to use that as like a, a leaf in the thing. I just wanted to try it. I'm not going to say it's going to replace my jumbo journal, but those are all pretty big, substantial, huge pieces of, you know, essentially background papers that I could use to make a huge junk journal. So I'm thinking about doing that. I do think I have enough to do it at this point, but it was just a matter of clearing the desk and trying it. And I didn't know if I wanted to film it because I've already shown you how I put the jumbo journal together. I felt like maybe it's overkill to show you doing that again. Possibly I might film it and just show you the footage and maybe just chat about it um, because the tutorial is still there from earlier this year. I believe it was New Year's we looked at that. Oh, Steve said he figured it out. It's all good. <laughs> Thank goodness, Steve, because I wasn't going to respond. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's all good. I'm at Preserved at Knott's Berry Farm uh, all, all over the weekend. I'm really loving that. I feel like it's really getting me into shape. I've noticed a little bit of a change in my body, which I'm loving. The... Uh, the soreness continues, but that's good. We know that that's good. Yesterday I did whack my knee with the suitcase that we dance on. And the suitcases are essentially just big blocks of wood. Like they're very heavy and very sturdy, which they have to be because we're dancing on top of them. Uh, but you do not want to hit yourself with one. And I just kind of picked it up and I was running across the stage and I'm clumsy as it is. And I don't have good spatial awareness, which I have, I don't think I've ever really had great spatial awareness. It got worse when I gained a lot of weight because I didn't know how big my body was and it was suddenly touching things that I'd never touched before. But then when I lost weight, I was so used to how, like what I'd learned, how big my body had gotten. So when my body was shrinking again, I was then confused again. So I think I've just got a whole bunch of issues with uh, depth perception, which is also an eyeball thing that I should probably get checked out before Steve gets too mad at me. Uh, but I whacked my knee with the suitcase and that is killing me. It's just, it's such a painful bruise. But you know when you touch the bruise because you just kind of like that a little bit? I've been doing that all morning. <laughs> so I did that last night. It's nothing that's going to stop me. Believe me. I have been loving uh, performing over at Knott's Berry Farm and doing Preserved. I haven't been that challenged in a show in a long, long time because... Uh, since I've returned to dancing, not that the things I've been doing haven't been challenging, they definitely all present their own challenges, but this is the first time I've been in a show uh, where I've had to change costumes. I'm also on microphone, which is always, like, it's a new experience for me, literally this year, uh, that I'm just still figuring out. Sometimes getting changed and getting it caught on your microphone, or there's a cord back there. The other day I was telling uh, people backstage, I was like, do you ever feel like it's just, it's just suffocating you? Like, it's just grabbing you like this? Because <laughs> you tape it to your face. And I said, like, the tape was just, I felt like it was grabbing my face like this. And then you tape the cord to your neck, but it hooks over your ears. So I'm like, it's grabbing my ears. It's grabbing my face. It's on the back of my neck. And then not only that, but you have to wear the mic belt. So it's uh, cinched around my waist because I like it to be as tight as it possibly can be. So it's it's grabbing my waist. And then I can feel that the pack on my back, I felt like everything was just going uh, in this microphone. And I became too aware of it. When you become hyper aware of it and then you can't unsee it or unfeel it or unthink it, I was, it was a nightmare to deal with at that moment. But I got over it um, and it was fine. Excuse me, I seem to be uh, developing allergies as we go along but I will not let it get the best of me today. That was something that uh, is it was a bit of a challenge, <laughs> the little freak out I had, but yeah, the, the show itself is just also really, really high energy, lots of jumping and like literally sliding to the floor and 
dancing on top of suitcases and running around and I feel like I'm never off stage, which is a great thing, but it is exhausting. Like, I, one of the first uh, signs that I felt like I was feeling like I was sitting into the show a bit more was when I felt like I didn't want to throw up after we'd finished the run, <laughs> which is never a good sign, but it, it was just physically like very, very taxing. So I always knew it was going to be a big cardio workout and I, I took that as like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to you know, drop a few extra kilos and hopefully this will really put me into tip top shape for summer. So I'm still fingers crossed uh, going to go well with that, but it is a killer. And I really do love that challenge. I love that it is pushing me beyond uh, even what I kind of considered was an option at this point. I don't know if I remember speaking to you about this, but uh, like when I danced before, I'd never really considered anything like off the table. Like I was, everything I'd learned to do when I was training and when I was, you know, 17 years old, um, I figured I could still do it, but I was also 22 or 23, 20, I think I stopped 25. So even then I felt very young and I felt like my body would recover from anything, uh, which it would, and it would rec recover very quickly. Obviously coming back into it at 32, your body is a little bit different and I had gained a lot of weight and I was also just out. I wasn't conditioned to dance like I was dancing. And so even things like jumping, I couldn't jump as high as I used to. I wasn't as flexible as I used to be. Uh, things like acrobatics, I felt like, oh, I don't really know if I should do that anymore. It feels a lot more dangerous. And, you know, a little injury you have when you're 22, you seem to be able to get by. But at 32, it feels a little bit more substantial. <laughs> things aren't as likely to heal as quickly. So I felt like even the risk was making me feel like I wasn't able to do certain things. Jumping particularly was scary for me because I used to love to just jump around. Uh, but my knees get so sore, or like my back would get so sore. And, you know, coming back into dancing, I definitely felt some of those limitations, but there was never, I was never really being asked to do anything that it was getting in the way of. And then the more I was going through Preserved, I was like, this is, this is kind of what I was worried about. Things like jumping off a bench or, you know, sliding to the floor and having to jump back up again. All of these things I would never have considered a problem back in the day, but now I'm like, what do I do? And I figured I should just go for it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to limit myself and say you can't do it and not actually try. I tried it in the most safe way I possibly could and I managed to do it and that has been very reassuring and has kind of boosted my confidence a little bit because I just realized a lot of those things aren't gone. I think I just got a little bit afraid and now that I'm not afraid of them anymore, I, it's great. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing it, keep going, keep pushing. Acrobatics, I'm still not sure. I don't know if the gymnastics is fully gone for me. There are tricks I'm willing to do, but the whole like round off back handspring back tuck days, I uh, they might be gone. <laughs> I don't know, unless it's a sprung floor and I can really take my time warming up. But I never really loved to do acrobatics in shows anyway. If they were like simple tricks like walkovers or handsprings, it was okay. But I never loved to do a lot of gymnastics, mostly because I was dancing on steel stages in the middle of the ocean and it really hurt when you, you know, even when you came down properly, it just was a lot of impact on your joints. So anyway, for now, I'll just stick with all the jumping and uh, be happy that I can do that. I do ice pack my knees like every five seconds. So I'm sure that's helping, which is great. I never used to take care of myself that well. I used to be the person that would just go to the stage and like kick my leg around for two minutes and then say I'm warm and then wait until the show warmed me up, <laughs> which was terrible. That's probably why my knees are sore now. Anyway, so I've been loving that. I'm over, uh, so I'm over there pretty often and uh, up until, you know, kind of towards the end of April. And then I'm mixing in a lot of uh, Disneyland rehearsals at that point as well. So um, I'm kind of splitting my time and I'm still doing a lot of journaling. Actually, I've picked up more journaling lately. I have done a lot of it off camera, which, you know, is not the best for you guys. Sorry about that. But um, hopefully you've been seeing me share a little bit more on Instagram, but I am picking up a lot more because I've just been more motivated to draw lately. I don't know what it is, but I'm really in an illustrative mood. Uh, the writing can really uh, go jump at this point. I'm so sick of writing. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't know what it is because it's not bad for anything. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, the words are the most important part of your journal. I really couldn't care less. 
the journal is the most important part of your journal. Whatever you decide to do in there, hopefully it's a reflection of what you enjoy so that when you look back at it, you're like, look at all this fun I had. Whatever it is, if it's collecting your junk and putting it in there, I love to do that. Uh, but photos, I'm super into photos, love printing photos and uh, drawing. I love drawing, I love painting, I love color, I love using all my supplies, like all that stuff. The words have always kind of been a little bit uh, of a challenge for me because I just intuitively don't want to write too much, uh, which is why I have such a small uh, Hobonichi five-year journal. I got the A6 because you don't have to write too much. <laughs> um, that's a perfect size for me to be writing, but I'm just not really in a root, uh, mood to write very much. So my five-year journal, I did get a little bit behind already, which I say already, it's March, like it's March 22. So I'm being behind at this point is actually kind of fine. Um, I caught back up today, so I'm feeling on top of it. And like, I can admit that I fell behind at this point because it's not really a problem. But yeah, the words writing for me right now, I just really am over it. And I'm trying to challenge myself to do, because I know how to do it. I, I'm not lost for what to do. It's just like the motivation to do it. It doesn't feel like the, the part of journaling I want to do right now. I don't know if you guys, journal in a way that is kind of multidisciplinary, right? Like you can draw, you can paint, you can swatch. I'm going to call that a completely separate thing because some people just swatch and that's totally valid too. Uh, you can do photography, you can collect junk and collage and, you know, put your junk in there. There's all these different types of activities we do in journals. Um, and I like to just bounce around between all of them, but writing is not one of the activities that I've always loved the most. In travel journals, I do like it. I think it's great for travel journals and I feel most motivated to do it for that because there's very special memories and experiences that I really want to reflect on. And so I really make that extra effort. My five-year journal is really the only place I challenge myself to write and write consistently and from a really you know, interesting perspective so that I, when I look back at it, I can enjoy reading those passages. But for my uh, journal that I'm working in today, like this one, I don't really try to write much in here. This is purely kind of a visual experience, which doesn't mean that there aren't stories in there. It doesn't mean that it doesn't reflect any kind of experience that I've had. Drawing those photos that Steve took of Grace obviously reminds me of the photo shoot and even some of the conversations that Steve and I were having about the photo shoot or, you know, just random stuff that I stick in there a lolly wrapper or a piece of, uh, like some of the paper I, I printed out, I didn't print out, Steve printed out some inspiration mood boards for a photo shoot. I just happened to have one of them, so I stuck that in there. To me, I know all the story attached to that. And when people say a picture is worth a thousand words, that's what I think and why I don't have to write the thousand words because <laughs> the picture's in there. And honestly, it can be just as stimulating, if not more sometimes, especially photos. I'll give photos that. Um, and I think that's why I, I tend to print so many photos and put them everywhere because they serve as a much more of a, a reminder for those experiences than words do because I'm, it's so much easier to take in a photo at a glance than it is to take in a whole chunk of writing and even know what that writing is. Um, however, there is no hierarchy of importance. I just like to get that off my chest every now and again because I do show you that I write a lot, uh, especially in the five-year journal, but it's really on the totem pole, like kind of the lowest of the low in my experiences, unless I'm depressed. If I'm feeling depressed, I shouldn't say that. That's what I should say. If I'm feeling depressed, I think it's rare that I've actually been in depression and I've never been clinically diagnosed. But it, when I've had feelings of depression, the writing does seem to be a bit more cathartic for me. Uh, but it's also, it's also something I do as a tool to process through a lot of emotions. So it can be cathartic, but then sometimes it can also be work. And then for that reason, I might not want to do it either. <laughs> if I'm feeling a little sorry for myself. But for the most part, when I'm happy and having fun and doing it, I, I don't tend to write. I tend to draw or paint or take photos and print photos, or collect junk and put junk everywhere. That's it. And that's what you're watching today. <laughs> Hopefully you had a good time watching it. I really gotta go, cause I gotta get ready for uh, shows. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I will see you again soon. I'll be working again diligently throughout the week to get this five year Hobonichi video done. I have the order I wanna do it all in. I think it's gonna be wonderful and beautiful. And it's gonna be so much overstimulating eye candy to look at in the video. And it will be worth the 100 billion hours I've spent filming and editing it. I'm putting that out there because it has to be at this point. I spent way too long on it. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to share that with you. And until then, I'll catch you around on Instagram. Goodbye.